Welcome to the Digital Production Buzz at the 2015 NAB Show. Hi, this is Larry Jordan, and this interview was recorded live on the trade show floor. For more information, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. From absolutely nowhere a few years ago to today, the world of video streaming and online video streaming has exploded. We know this for a fact because you're watching the show streaming live. And one of the companies that's been deeply involved in this whole process is a company called Ustream. David Gibbons is the VP of Marketing for Ustream. David, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. How would you describe Ustream? Ustream is the largest live video streaming platform on the internet. And in the last couple of years, we've been evolving to be a platform for recorded video as well. And we've been making our platform available for businesses of all kinds, including uh, many of the people here at uh, NAB, to use as a way to share their media and to promote their businesses. Now, you're differentiating between live and recorded. What's the difference to you? Well, live tends to be a great deal more complicated to pull off, as I'm sure you're Amen well aware. Amen to that, uh, yes. And th that's also true at the technical level. Right behind the scenes, the, the packets of video need to be processed in a very time-sensitive way, and uh, there's a very different set of algorithms that are applied to processing video when it's being streamed live than on demand. So let's just walk a workflow through, because we have been, the arrows are still bleeding at this point from <laughs> us as we put it together. We have, a, we have our production, so we've got a switch production. We're now compressing that into an H.264 stream. What happens next? How does that get from where we are in our studio to somebody at home watching? What's it's a, the workflow? It's a great question, and it's actually maybe the least understood part of <laughs> live video streaming. Uh, people often think, since they've got an H.264 stream, that that's enough and it's ready to go. That was our original thinking, so I plead <laughs> guilty to that. So, but you're quite right. People get it down to a great-looking line cut. And at that point, they need to bring it into an encoder that will prepare it for the live stream. And the encoder will make sure that it's coded to the right spec, and H.264 is definitely the recommended video format to use. It will also make sure that the stream is fed up to the ingest point that's part of our platform, so that the stream can be taken in and some additional processing can be done before it's turned around and fed out to the players. In general terms, what's the additional processing? So in general terms, uh, we're taking the stream in, we're making sure that we synchronize the audio and video components, we're transcoding it, are really, uh, we're doing two, two jobs, transcoding and transmuxing, because we're taking it from the incoming resolution and generating in the cloud some lower, usually lower bandwidth uh, resolutions, so that viewers on lots of different types of devices will all have a good buffer-free experience. And then we're also converting its format to make sure that it's suitable for streaming on iPhones, tablets, there you're, there you're talking HLS, HTTP live streaming. Exactly. So we're making sure that versions are available for both. Uh, and then we're also recording it simultaneously. So we make a recording as it passes through our, our uh, system. Unless the broadcaster has said, let's not do that, we automatically generate that recording. Now, this is that second server, the streaming server that's at your end, is actually doing two things. It's doing all this transcoding, but then it has to feed what we've learned is called a CD on a content distribution network. Exactly. Because if I've got a thousand people watching, there isn't enough bandwidth coming from my host system to feed a thousand people. Does Usteam provide that CDN, that additional bandwidth? Yes, we do, and that is one of the key components that makes live quite a bit more complicated than on-demand. Again, because something if, we've discovered Yeah, the time. so, you know, if it, with on-demand, a thousand people watching a video will probably be spread out over the course of a week or more. But with no, live, for, they're yes, all they're literally all there. connecting at the same time, Absolutely. and your content delivery network, your CDN, needs to be equipped to deal with that. So, where does Ustream fit in? I walk through the booth, and I see a number of different uh, competitors. Livestream is huge, and Ustream is a competitor to them. How does somebody decide whether to go with you or them or invent their own system or whatever? That's a great question, too. I think, you know, like an, a lot of technology transitions, we have seen many companies start by going, we can make our own system that will do this. And then they quickly encounter all of the problems of device compatibility, of transcoding to multiple different formats. Those are all the kinds of problems that, frankly, most people who are involved in, in producing the video uh, are better off leaving 
to a platform to solve. And Ustream is a platform that solves all of those very elegantly. We are completely convinced of that fact. <laughs> Why you not live stream? Well, we, we have a, a broad platform now that we've been evolving into several different editions that solve specific problems for customers. So you may want to just simply stream live, and of course we do that, that's our pro broadcasting platform. But lately we've been making a couple of di a different uh, editions. One is Ustream Demand for people who want to capture information about their customers to drive their sales and their business, and Ustream Align which allows you to do very secure internal streams to communicate with your employees. For stuff where you don't want the public to pay attention. Right, so if you're sharing information about your strategy internally and you have a global workforce and you would like to reach them at scale and live and also provide a recorded way for them to catch up with that, then you need a, an enterprise-grade security platform that can also deliver the live streaming experience that people expect. Now, there's a couple of components. I'm going to ask about price, and I realize that price, you can only answer as if it depends. But there's two sides. One is the process of feeding you the signal, and the second is the bandwidth necessary to support five or 5,000 or five million viewers. Describe how you price both of those sides. So we don't charge for the incoming signal. That's the process that we call the ingest. Basically, that comes in for free, and we have, uh, at this point, more than 30 million people with free accounts on Ustream who use that to share content uh, with their friends. And 30 million originators? Yeah, so in 2014, for example, more than 20 million uh, individual live broadcasts were originated on our platform. So over the, the seven year history of the company, 30 million people have registered and done a broadcast of some kind and that's, a lot of them are still doing that as you can tell from that number. So, okay, so now we've got the origination, that's free, called the ingest. Yeah. So how does Ustream make money? So at that point, uh, if you want to share it broadly, you can do that actually for free as well. We have an ad supported, completely free account that lets people get used to the platform and understand its capabilities. At some point, most people go, well, I don't really want advertising content on my content. I would like to take more control of that stream, maybe c control the way that it's branded as well, and then they start to pay us. And uh, our plans start from $99 a month and go up there to enterprise plans for tens of thousands. And what are we buying for the $99 a month? So we basically sell the ability to reach an audience of a specific size. And people uh, size that audience by figuring out how many people will watch and how long will they stay watching for. At $99 a month, you can have 100 people watching for an hour, for example, and we call that 100 viewer hours. So what we're paying for really is bandwidth for distribution. Exactly. And your fee is coming out of that bandwidth. That's exactly right. And we operate our own content delivery network, which allows us to provide that at a lower cost and uh, give people a great service with transcoding included. And for people that want more information, where can they go on the web? They can visit us at ustream.tv, and that's where you'll find information about all of our products and also about uh, lots of people who are broadcasting even from the show. That website is the letter U, ustream.tv, not com, TV. And David Gibbons is the VP of Marketing at Ustream. David, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.